And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Karen Laurie, who you may know as Tina Lord from the TV show One Life to Live. Karen is also an international best-selling author of three books that have been endorsed by Deepak Chopra, Bruce Lipton, and more. Today, we'll discuss her near-death experience and her passion about helping people learn how to have their body, subconscious mind, and conscious mind be aligned with what they want. Karen, thank you for joining me today and welcome. Thank you so much, Jeff. I feel really appreciative. It's fun to be here. Well, it's an honor to have you. Karen, let's start with the day that your NDE happened and go from there. The one that I was conscious of, which is probably the second one, but I'll share it first, happened. I was um, I was 18. I was living in Hawaii. I was doing a modeling job on a boat, you know, in a bikini. And they wanted me to do spinnaker flying, which I had not done before. The spinnaker is a big, wide um, sail. That's It's the most beautiful sail, actually. And they take the two ends of it and they put a little swing and you sit on it. Now, it was gusting like 30 to 40 knots. And so there was a man that went up before me and he probably weighed three times my weight. And he, he said, it's a little rough, but, you know, it'll be fun. So I said, OK. So I get on it and I'm holding on and I didn't have enough weight. So the the sail inverted itself and whipped. I could see that I saw the top of the mast. It was a 65 foot mast, saw the top of the mast and then bammed me onto my back onto the water, the ocean. And I, you know, got the air knocked out of me. I don't know what else happened because I never checked, but I got the air knocked out of me and I drowned. I I started going down, down, down and I got completely disoriented. I didn't know where I was. I, I didn't know where up was. It was past the part in Hawaii where the, the island is underground and it was in the depth. So I couldn't see the bottom. I couldn't see anywhere. I didn't know where the, I was pretty far down. And then I was struggling. I was panicked. I was, you know, needing breath. And I ended up, something happened. I don't even know, but I relaxed. And all of a sudden I felt this warm, kind, welcoming, beautiful, golden energy. And I felt like I saw people I knew well, but I didn't know who they were, but I felt this connection. And, and, you know, I'm 18 years old and I, I am like, getting this feeling of, oh, I'm going to go in that direction, because it was a very beautiful sensation. And then I heard a voice that said, do you want to live or die? And I thought of my mother, because I I love my mom. And I immediately thought I want to live. And without me doing anything that I'm aware of, somehow my body or my spirit or something knew how to take me towards the top of the ocean because it was so black. It was so, you know, so dark. So I got up to the top. I still couldn't breathe because my the wind was so knocked out of me. I couldn't I couldn't still catch my breath. And it was big waves. And the guy, uh, one of the guys had climbed down uh, from the boat. It was a pretty big boat, a uh, sailboat. And he had climbed down and he was throwing a whatever you call it, a, a, a thing life life lifesaver and it was far away like 20 feet away plus these big waves and i still hadn't breathed and i didn't know i don't know how long it was at this point but i still hadn't breathed and i started to go back down under the ground i mean under the ocean and again i started to go into that drifty beautiful golden light and then the voice again said do you want to live or die and i thought of my mom so Again, I don't know how it happened, but I got to the life, like right as soon as I made that choice, I got to the life vest and it was far and I had still had not breathed. I got to the life vest and the guy pulled it in. He never had um, even gotten in the water. He was so like afraid of the ocean, (laughs) pulled it in and he pulled me up, um, you know, put me on his shoulder and uh, climbed up the, the rope ladder back on the boat and they had to pump my stomach then they had to give me mouth to mouth i threw up uh ocean and they had to give me mouth to mouth and then finally i got my first breath it was probably like 
I don't know, I'm guessing eight or nine minutes because it was a long time underwater and it was a long time trying to get to the thing. I didn't have any strength in my body to get to that, but there was a power that came forth through me. And so it showed me a couple of things. One is that I'm never going to be afraid of death. It's so welcoming and beautiful and familiar. And that when I make a decision about something that's important to me, like my life or my mom, that there's a power that comes forth that provided me the ability to get to the top without knowing where it was, to get to the lifesaver without having any breath and huge waves. So those are the two ways that it really awakened me in a, in a sense. I had black and blue marks up and down my spine. I probably had a, a concussion. Um, I was I was not great afterwards. I was really, you know, struggling. I had a lot of pain, felt like broken glass in my back up until about four years ago. So it was always really, um, my back used to be really tight and all this stuff, but but it, it, um, it just gave me a sense of the power that we have, the choice that we have in every moment. After that experience, did you happen to notice that you had any new abilities that could be considered psychic that you didn't have prior? I had some psychic stuff before when I was, before I, before I was in Hawaii, I did have some, but then it just seemed it got more clear, more frequent, if you will. And I was often more in the right place at the right time. I was often more, I'd get clear about something I wanted, like with acting, I hadn't been an actor. And then I I was studying pre-med and then I got this understanding one night, I heard a voice, I hear a lot of voices, um, and the voice said, <laughs> this said, uh, do you want a life that's linear or do you want a life of adventure? And I thought adventure. And I had been, I had been already having acting jobs while I was in college, but this, that thing made me go, oh, I want to go into acting. Literally the next day I made the decision. The next day I told my friend, I want to be an actor. And I walk out of the restaurant where we are. And this woman comes up to me and she says, hi, are you an actor? And I said, yeah, you know, I was like 20 something. And I said, yeah. And she said, well, I'm an, I'm a manager. Here's my card. Give me a call. And so I ended up working with her and it was just like, there was a lot more synchronicities. I want to say also, so intuition and synchronicities and that sense of, I can make a choice and the, the universe or whatever you call it will support me. Who do you think that voice was a guide? Yeah, like I call it my spirit, but it could be, you know, could be anything. <laughs> could be God, could be love, could be pure consciousness. I just say it's my spirit because it feels like it's always with me now. And it feels like it's home. I don't know what terminology you use, but I feel like it would be possibly your higher self or I like to call it your complete self, which exists on the other side. Yeah, I, I don't call it my higher self because one of the things I've gotten from that energy is that there's no hierarchy in the universe. Meaning they're not higher than us, our spirits or whatever you call it, that it's that they're with us. It does feel like it's my complete self. It does feel like it's who I really am and who we all really are, but it's not, it doesn't feel like it has an authority over me or a, or a hierarchy over me. I really said there's no hierarchy in the universe. All hierarchy is man-made. Right. I'm thinking more like our complete self is on the other side and we're here as a filtered version. And sometimes when people cross over like you did you make a connection or you establish some kind of connection and maybe that other part of you is you know gave you that option of a linear life or an adventurous one but i could be totally wrong no it does feel like it's my it feels like it's my complete self but i don't feel like it's the other side myself just because i feel everybody here so much you know lights turn on in my house and i realize who it is and i 
I do a synchronistic reach out that then I find out why later or, you know, just there's so much. So I, I, it's helped me understand that people don't uh, die. <laughs> I mean, I think you make a great point because as I evolve doing this show, I feel kind of more like the other side is just like turning a radio dial. Like here, we're 98.2, and if you change the dial, you're 100.5, but we're all still here, just in a different frequency. Exactly. I call it uh, radio, like what, what I used to be in most of the time, which was Radio KFU. <laughs> and then now I'm in K-Love, you know, because here in California, we have uh, everything starts with a K. Mm -hmm. uh, but so <laughs> all the radio stations, I mean. Um, so, yeah, I agree. It's exactly that. And it feels like my like our spirits are always wanting to guide us, always wanting to. They're always beaming love to me. It feels like love. It feels like love and comfort and home and kindness and wisdom clarity beaming 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 and then when you're in that same space as radio k love or 105 whatever it is you you have a better capacity to channel that's been my experience anyway has the memory of that experience faded over time not at all i can feel it as viscerally i feel the light of it i feel the power of it i feel the miracle of it I don't feel that clutching, can't breathe feeling. I don't feel that, but I feel, and I, re, but I remember it. It's, I can remember it, but I don't feel that, but I can feel the light. Like that light and that connection, that feeling of welcome, connection, of belonging, of being, there was nothing separate. That feels like, that's the reality and that light taught me that i use death in that in that experience like i explained to know how to live in that feeling of being connected of loving everyone of being light of of welcoming everyone of of knowing that everyone belongs of knowing knowing there's no hierarchy that that no one's higher than me, I'm not higher than anyone, that we're all part of this ocean of love. What inspires you about the experience? It's that knowing that there's a power within us or around us or there for us that is consistently available when we're really clear and make a clear choice. It's that power that makes the impossible possible. It's the power that when I wanted to give up, it reminded me of what was important. So I think those things are really important, but also that, that sense of, of connection and that, and that love, it's so um, powerful. I had another NDE, I think, and I'll just share it kind of briefly. It was when I was around three, I was riding with my friends around the block. I had a big wheel. Most of them had bikes. So I was, you know, trying to keep up. And um, a looming hill, which was the, the sidewalk, you know, where it buckles under a, a root, came up. And I, I was a little nervous. And I, my big wheel caught the lip, and I went head first into a tree. Now, a sycamore. I love trees. Anyway, that, um, <laughs> I, apparently, I went unconscious. And somehow, I was home. And I never remembered that. I just remembered waking up like about 20, 20 hours later, waking up and being, you know, having an, a, a headache and not knowing why everybody was so concerned over me. And then they said, you got in an accident. And I was like, what do you mean? And I didn't, I wasn't conscious of it. I was too young and it didn't process. A few years ago, so I had this narcolepsy. Narcolepsy is where you fall asleep all the time and you don't sleep at night. You have lots of wake up in the night. And so I was at this place where I'd been diagnosed with narcolepsy. I didn't want to have it anymore. I was really working to let it go. And then one day I was in a deep uh, self-hypnosis experience. And I remembered being little 
on the couch. I had really, you know, like white blonde hair and I'm tiny and my mom and my dad and Dr. Bouch, my pediatrician were there. And Dr. Bouch told my mom and dad, you have to wake her up every hour, which now we know is not true. But at the time they thought you have to wake her up every hour. And so my mom and dad took turns and I was above, I was above and I saw myself like a white, a white light looking down at this scene and I could hear the conversation and I could see that my little self on the couch got the understanding, oh, sleeping through the night is dangerous. I better make sure I wake up. That's narcolepsy. And I know, and as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh my God. And, And I realized, of course, and I started to do the healing work I know how to do. And next thing I know, that night I started sleeping better. I sometimes now sleep 10 hours all at once or not, or nine hours all at once. One day I slept 11 hours, only woke up one time and then got back to sleep. Um, but I'm sleeping pretty steadily, at least six hours straight. And then, and then if I have to get up, I go back to sleep and it's a totally different experience. I have a totally different experience of sleep than I've ever had in my life after that one day. So I think it was real because it helped me heal. You know, something that the doctor said, you'll never heal from this. You have to take medicine for the rest of your life. I definitely think it's totally real. From that point on as a child, for the rest of your life until you fixed it, were you waking up constantly every night? Mm -hmm. But when I got a little older and I could read, what was I reading all the time? People like Raymond Moody and people who were studying near-death experiences. I read those books. I was obsessed from like second, third I read other books, but I was obsessed with those books Um, and I would read them over and over and over again. And I think there was a part of me that remembered it to some, you know, or remembered that feeling of it. And so I was attracted to hearing other people's stories. But um, but yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it definitely feels like that was divine clarity that came a few years ago about that experience. And it just, it made me like my mom and I started to do more psychic things together. Um, Just a lot of, you know, I just became more aware of what was psychic phenomenal. I read a lot of those books about psychicness. So I think it probably opened that up in me as well, because I'm pretty intuitive, not all the time, but a lot of the time. I'm gonna have to read my notes to be able to, to ask this question properly. But um, so you help people learn how to have their body, subconscious mind, and conscious mind be aligned. And that to me sounds like exactly what you did. Yeah. And so are you doing this now just to help people help themselves through a myriad of problems they may have? Yes. When you're most of the problems that most people have, not always, but often, comes from early, early childhood where we don't really remember it and we think it's normal. So then that's why a lot of times people say, I don't know why I married my husband. I mean, I married my dad and my husband, you know, or, you know, I, it's like that kind of stuff. Or, or somebody will say, even if you, if you're not healed, even if you marry the great person, if you're not healed, you'll make them into the person that you had trauma with as a child, right? (laughs) So it's really amazing um, how much our early child impacts us. And part of the thing I learned, partly because in order to heal myself, I used to have not just narcolepsy, but all these um, emotion. I had PTSD, depression, suicidal all the time, um, anxiety, panic, probably other things that I can't, oh, dissociation, I would go into like where I wasn't present. All those things have gotten healed in me. I don't have, I never get triggered. I never, in a bad way, I get triggered in a good way. I never have any PTSD. I don't have any stress because I've literally had to learn how to shift my own subconscious with all of its sort of, you know, traumatic upbringing, not my parents, but well, sometimes my parents, but mostly like other people 
But the traumas that I had as a kid, and by traumas, I mean, you know, people being abusive or people being unkind or people beating you up or people being sexual when you're too little or, you know, people threatening you, people hurting you, those kind of things. There might be other forms of trauma, but those are the ones that I experienced. I mean, I know there are other tra forms of trauma. Those are the ones I experienced. And they, I, in order for me to heal my body and to heal my mental capacity, I had to heal all of those traumas. That's why I can help my clients because I, there's a saying I like that says, um, you cannot transmit something you haven't got. But now I've got this alignment where my subconscious and my conscious and my body are all in alignment. So my body's in spectacular health. My relationships are phenomenal. My finances are great. My uh, I sleep really well. My skin gets better. My hair gets thicker. My eyelashes grow longer. I mean, it's just crazy all the ways things can improve when you have that, when your subconscious is supporting you. So that means that when I wake up, the first thing I think about is, my subconscious is is working to keep me into a place of being happy, into a place of being aligned, into a place of loving everyone. You discovered your subconscious problem when you were in a hypnotic state, I think, and you remembered that NDE from childhood. So are you hypnotizing people to help them remember these traumas or what are you doing? No, I mean, I actually healed almost everything except for the narcolepsy. Before that, doing different practices, um, and I was already helping people heal in lots of ways. That one was something that just came to me. Um, sometimes I help people relax. I'm not a hypnotherapist. I know how to do my own self-hypnosis, but sometimes I help people relax. Meditation is a form of hypnosis, if you will, in the sense that when you're deeply relaxed, which you can get in meditation, you're more able to be aware of the stuff that's going on but there's other things that you can do that don't have to go into the subconscious that actually change your subconscious the body for example is an expression of your subconscious mind so if there's something going on in your body you know whether it's narcolepsy or dissociation if there's something going on in your body that's not what you want it could be weight it could be hair thickness it could be anything there's so many areas if there's any issue in your body that you don't want it's almost always coming from something that is a programming that you were given and then when you start to reprogram it your body will shift i i have clients and their physiologies will shift in in our sessions like it's just they just start to shift they will shift more as time goes on but with every session they literally get shifts where uh, heart problems gone uh you know uh, blood sugar shaky and then stable you know things that are not high blood pressure relaxation you know this it's a totally a different thing so there's there's a lot of different ways to approach it so i approach it from deep work i approach it from external work i approach it from all sorts of areas and the, my biggest goal is to get not just people aligned with what they want, but to get them aligned with their spirit so that their spirit guides them. I don't want to guide people. I just want to help people get into their place where they can be their own guides. Does it take a long time to resolve issues and problems? If you're doing it on your own, like I did at first, it took a couple of years, like several years. And then I still had problems with the narcolepsy for a few more years. And then that got resolved. When... When I work with people, I generally work with people now for about six months. And what happens in that six months is they start to get, they start to really transform. Some people like to stay longer. Some people um, don't need as much, but they still, are, we have a lot of fun when I work with people. So it's not like heavy, it's never heavy. It's always fun. Um, it's always fun, he, like healing to me has to be fun for it to be effective. <laughs> it's my, it's my experience. And so, um, yeah, so I like to get people really hooked up with their, with their spirit. And that's something that there's the hooking them up and then it's them learning how to trust it. So that's why I do it for about six months. 
because there's once they get it, once they can feel it, once they perceive it, once they have that intuition, that sense of being guided, then there's the, how do you deal with it when you go visit your family? How do you deal with it when your dog dies? How do you deal with it when, you know, something happens? And so that's kind of what the, the extra time is. If we go back to your NDE for a moment, do you feel like what you were experiencing was dreamlike or what we experience now is dreamlike and that was more real? Yeah, that was so real. It, there was no dream to it. It didn't feel like a dream. It felt like a deeper reality that I had not known. It felt like this is the second one when I was in the ocean, you know, it just that this is the one I remember the most. It felt like I was so loved and so accepted. And even though I hadn't experienced it to that depth before that I remembered, it was so true. I knew the truth of it beyond, beyond all the programming that I had, even though I still was uh, connected to that programming. It went deeper than my whole, anything I had lived in, in my life that I remembered at that time. After it happened, did your life change dramatically or you just kind of blew it off and went on with life at first i blew it off because i was you know i'm 18 didn't go to a doctor didn't get an x-ray didn't get an mri didn't get a whatever didn't go to a chiropractor what a nothing i just just i did get massages because i needed massages after. but um i just sort of blew it off but it was impossible not to see the consistency of synchronicities, the consistency of wanting something and then it comes in, the consistency of knowing things before they happen. Like even once I had started acting, I, I just had so many experiences where I would know before I went in, oh, I have this. And then I'd go in an audition and I might not hear for a week or three, but I just knew, I just knew I had it at some times. And then when I got like the one life to live thing, the audition was in New York. And I, uh, I went to the audition early in the morning because they did it before the, they start the work at like seven. So they did it really early in the morning. So I went to go see a play, uh, a 10 a.m. play on Broadway with, um, oh, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof with Kathleen um what's her name this is a long time ago so but you probably know her um anyway so i went to go see that and when i was walking back to my hotel i started crying and i said oh my god i'm moving here and when i got to the hotel there was a telegram because this is a long time ago um there was a telegram and it said you know congratulations you got the job you're moving to new york call us you know and it was my agent and and i knew it before I knew it like for for maybe four or five blocks as I was walking back to the hotel, I was just sobbing and I thought I'm moving here and then I was. So I've had that so many times and I think also, you know, um, one of my best friends at the time from high, from junior from junior high, I was studying with my um, my roommates. And I jumped, or not, they weren't my roommates, they were my next door neighbors. And we were all like science majors. So we would all study together as opposed to my roommates who were all just, I don't know what they were. They were like drug addicts or something. <laughs> I never saw them. <laughs> but um, so I was studying with my, my scientist roommates and I jumped up and I said, I gotta go. And they said, what's the matter? I said, I have to call my friend, Teresa. And they said, "What? why don't you use our phone? I said, I can't, I gotta go. And I ran back and I went into my, my room in this apartment where I lived and I didn't even turn on the light and I pick up the phone and I called Teresa and she says, hello. I said, Teresa, what happened? She said, my mom and dad were in a plane crash. She had just found out and, and I knew it. And then we were at her house. This is before the second NDA, NDE, the NDA is that you know, don't, don't tell your secrets. Yeah. This, the NDE, this is before the second one. This is after the first one, if it, if I had it, but I think it did. We were in her house um, on the weekend. I went home to go see her and um, 
<laughs> her mom and dad had her dad had died in, in the plane crash and her mom was so alive. He had covered he had covered her when they went down and saved her life. And um, Teresa and I were in her bedroom and there was a smell of, of chrysanthemums, no carnations, carnations. And um, I said, wow, do you smell those carnations? And she goes, that's my dad's favorite flower. And we ran into her mom's room and her mom was sitting in a rocking chair and she had her eyes closed and she was smiling and she heard us come in and she said, he's here. And it was palpable. It was the scent of the, um, what are they called? The carnations. Carnations, the sense of the, I was getting chrysanthemums in my head. The sense of the carnation, the scent of the carnations in her room was so thick and there was no, there were no flowers in her room. There was not, it, it, like people hadn't brought flowers or anything like that. It was just, it was him letting us know that he was there. And it was so obvious. Right. And those, those things happen over and over again now. So they've happened mm, a lot. <laughs> right after your experience, were you thinking like, oh my gosh, I just died and and I came back or I was alive on the other side or did you just kind of block it out and didn't think about it? I blocked it out. I had, it, it was, I didn't know how to talk about it. I didn't know how to say anything. Like I had this wonderful boyfriend and I, he was like, oh my God, you know, cause you could see I was black and blue, you know, my whole up and down. And he was, he, he was so supportive and I, I, I didn't know how to talk about it. It was, I didn't have vocabulary. I'd read all those books, but I didn't have a vocabulary from my own experience to say it. And it wasn't until part of what got me healed is I had a, a real spiritual experience where so many things started to shift. That's when I really saw it because now I was in the same place as that love that I perceived in that NDE. What were your spiritual beliefs during your life? And did the NDE have any effect or change them? I went as a, a junior high school student to a church. I, my parents didn't go. It was like with my friends. And the minister was a file. So after that, I, um, and he did like so many kids. It's crazy. Um, so um, he, I, I basically hated um, religion at that point. And that was like, as a, as a teenager high school, I was still hating religion when that experience happened. Then I had a, a little bit of a spiritual awakening. And this, this woman who was a mentor of mine uh, later, a couple of years later, I told her about the experience of the church. And she said, why don't you design your own idea of what God is? And I did, and I could feel it more. And it was had nothing to do with church. It had everything to do with love. It had everything to do with kindness. And, I, and it had everything to do with us connecting to God, that God was always there. It was us connecting. And I just made this thing and she said, so that's what you want to connect with. And she just started to teach me that. And just like, she was the one that I picked, like when there was so many other people I could have picked as mentors, she was, she was all love, you know, and she was so aware. So there was something there, but, um, and then, and then I had just so many experiences at, you know, going through, from that time where I just, I just kept seeing things shift. Um, I just kept seeing, you know, I just, I would, I literally think, oh, I want to go to Africa, get an audition. And the audition was on Tuesday and I'm flying to Africa on Friday. Like it, it's that, it was started to be that kind of thing. And I want to travel a lot, got an audition again on a Tuesday. I had a lot of good Tuesday auditions and then was in Japan a couple days later, you know, like 
and 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 I wanted to learn how to dance and who what was I doing but a dance commercial in Japan with a great dancer who was he was phenomenal and so you know like these things kept I kept thinking of things and things would happen I didn't have command over it I didn't have consciousness over it now I do now these things happen all the time and I know how to do it at the time I was just like wow that's so cool you know I just didn't know that I was actually doing it it's so interesting because right before I started preparing to get ready today, I was flipping through TikTok and there was a video that popped up about manifesting. And this person said that you have to l ask yourself lofty questions like, why am I su so, so successful? You know, why am I making so much money or whatever? Do you think that that works or do you feel like what you, are doing works or can you give us any tips to help us manifest better in our lives? I actually have made videos like that um, because I, you know, like how, how happy can I be? How much fun can I have? This is a really great practice to do. How easy can life be? How healthy can I be? How free can I feel? How connected to my spirit can I be? How intuitive can I be? I ask those questions to myself um a lot and i like the way it feels it does i don't ever look for an answer i use the question to open my mind and to feel better or to feel good that's one thing i do another thing is you know when you appreciate something when any of us sent, spend some time appreciating things in in detail what i mean is i could say i love trees but what i love about trees are Trees, trees take in carbon dioxide. Trees give us oxygen. Trees give, give us shade. Trees are trees are so beautiful. I live on a hill. Trees come out of the hill and then they go up. But trees are resilient. Trees are incredible, incredibly artistic. Trees are abundant. They're prolific. They are grounding. They're they feel like they hug me when I hug them. <laughs> You know, so I would go, I would go into appreciating something in a detail that makes you feel like, ah, I really feel good. And another thing that I do that I think is really important, when I said our bodies are a reflection of our subconscious mind, when you're writing out something, let's say you're writing out appreciation, or let's say you're saying those fun questions, or let's say you're, there's lots, I have, a, I've written three books, and my books all have practices people can do. Um, I can give a link, but here I'll just show you. This one's chronic pleasure. That shows you how to go from pain and fatigue to vibrant energy and chronic pleasure. This one's a memoir. And then this one is um, chronic pleasure in relationships. It helps women have better relationships with men. So when you're doing that, any of these practices, one of the things that I've seen is that I will get tears to my eyes or my heart will feel like it's opening. And so then I appreciate that because now that's hooking up my conscious with my subconscious. My body being a reflection of my subconscious. So if I were saying, you know, I love trees and I love their leaves and I love the color of the leaves against the blue sky. And I love how some trees are deciduous and some trees have beautiful fragrances and some trees have beautiful flowers and some trees are evergreen and some trees are really tall and some trees are tiny and and I would go through it. Now I'm feeling like my eyes might well up in a minute. That's what I would write I, or if I'm writing it down or that's what I would note if I'm just thinking about it. I would note, oh, I'm affecting my physiology and I'm getting more close to tearing up or I'm affecting my heart. My heart is opening up and relaxing. Whatever it is, you might feel your belly start to relax, whatever, wherever you go. I don't have tension in my body usually. I mean, probably a little bit, but not, not like I used to. And, um, <laughs> but so I don't, I, I will, but what I'll get is a deeper sense of being like, oh, I'm so relaxed or, oh, I'm more exhilarated. I can feel these, these shifts. So that's a really good thing where you link up your, subconscious with your intention to connect with that love you can look at things that you love i have a game i play with three friends 
where we, and I've taught my clients, they, most of them have this game that they're playing with other, others of my clients. And it's where we, um, one person picks a topic and then we focus on that topic. Yesterday it was play. So we focused on all the ways we play and what play feels like, you know, it's innovative, it's fun, it's creative, it's childlike, it's spontaneous, it's free, it's not thinking, it's it's uninhibited, it's playful, it's joyful, it's alive, right? So that's part of the game. And I do that game even on my own, even when I'm not with my, I mean, we do it over text, but even when I'm not texting them, I do that game a lot just because it's fun. But also the more you meditate, deep meditation, the more you shift your physiology. I used to have, excuse me, panic attacks. And now I'm so like chill. The more chill you can be, the more energy can roll through you without you having to block it off. A lot of times on the show, we talk about reincarnation and why we keep coming back and soul traps and all kinds of stuff. And People experience a lot of suffering here. Do you think that is something that they planned pre-birth or they just kind of get into trouble as a child, kind of like what we were talking about earlier, and they can actually get themselves out of it? We can all get ourselves out of anything. Um, for I feel like, now this might be my imagination, but this is what I really feel, is my spirit said, before I came into this body, I felt like my spirit said, bring it on. Now, I didn't remember that <laughs> till it was a little too late, but bring it on. I can handle it. I'll find my way back, you know, and it, and I think it was kind of just like if you're going to play, you know, uh, tennis and you're good, you want to play with somebody better than you so that you can keep growing, right? Whatever the game is always fun to play with people who are better than you in in their in that skill level because you learn so much and so having <coughs> excuse me having that challenge to myself and bringing it on and then forgetting about it the forgetting is the is the uh the benefit of having a greater challenge to learn how to really play the game and so a lot of people that, that are suffering, it's simply because they forgot who they are. I mean, we have trauma. Our trauma can brainwash us or brain dirt us. <laughs> brain dirt us. Trauma can brain dirt us to forget this stuff. I think I remembered it as a kid because even when I was like little, it, I think it might have been after this uh, accident, though. I think I was probably like four or five, the first one. Um, the big wheel accident, I would, there was a long hall and then it was my mom and dad's bedroom and they had a, um, their closets were mirrored and I would run really, really fast down the hall to try to catch who I really was. Cause I knew I wasn't this little tiny thing. I knew I was much bigger. So I kept trying to find it and I kept trying to find it. And I would also go behind the house, run behind houses and try to see, cause I thought they were like sets you know, where, where it looks like a house, but there's just posts and a couple of things on the back. As a little kid, I, I was doing that, knowing that what I was seeing wasn't the truth, knowing that what I was seeing, I just didn't know how to know it until like 15 years ago when I actually had a real healing. And I mean, I've had little healings, but this was like, this was like, um, you know, bam, clarity came in and then I was like oh now I know why I was looking in that now, now I know why I was trying to find myself in the mirror I knew I was my spirit I didn't know how to access it though and I thought I could see it in the mirror because you know as a kid <laughs> this is a daily show and I feel so lucky that I have so many people that come and watch every day and I feel like I try to give them value every day and in reciprocation of for coming and watching. I know you work with people, but can you give us tips that we can do by ourselves? Absolutely. So when, just when we were talking about, you know, our spirit, it would be, let's say that our complete self, one of the practices I do, I think it's in all my books 
um, it's, it's an I am practice. And what I think about is I, I do it in a certain way. First of all, I think I'm my spirit. You're your spirit. Everybody's our spirit. It's just, we got to remember it and re and re embody it. Um, so I will imagine or think or feel my spirit around me. And then I ask in my heart, I am, and I get this expansive feeling. So I would write out, I'm expansive. I am loved. So I'd write out, I'm loved. And I'm listening. It's not from my head. It's from listening. And that gives people a way to bypass who they think they are, because now they're going to get a visceral or an audio or a, an emotional experience in their body that will help them understand and it will always feel good if you get a negative one it's not who you are because who you are is just all love so <laughs> so if you get a negative one that means you go take a nap or go outside and pet, pet a cat um <laughs> but um but that practice is a really good practice it's good to do probably like when you already feel good, if you don't feel good, one of the things that I teach my clients to do is to love all parts of ourselves. So, and this is something I do with the world. So for example, let's say in the world, there's censorship, right? I will say to myself, I love the part of me that censors. Even if I don't relate to it, I probably censor myself in some ways, I don't know. You know, I love the part of me if, let's say there's lies and coercion and whatever, obfuscation, you know, trying to hide things, um, then I will say, you know, I love the part of myself that obf obf obfuscates, obfuscates things. I love the part of myself that, um, that lies. I love the part of myself that, and I'm not, even if I don't relate to it, what I'm doing is I'm loving because part of that in the second NDA where I really experienced it on a pretty conscious, more conscious level, part of that was a knowing that we're all we're all one. So if I love it in myself, those that are doing that, usually they're doing it, they're always doing it because they forgot who they were. They forgot who they are. But as I love myself, I don't have any problem with them. You know, I don't hate them or anything like that. But now I can see them in their humanity and have kindness and compassion. So that's another practice I do. Um, let me think if there's another one that is easy for people to do on their own. Oh, this is one I like. This one I do, I do it with friends, but I do it alone too. Um, am I giving you too many things? <laughs> Not at all. Okay, good. Um, this one, I, I think of the letter A and the, the phrase, I love feeling, it's a, it's a bypass of going too high where you can't actually feel it. But if you say, I love feeling adored, I love feeling adoring, I love feeling amorous, I love feeling athletic, I love feeling alive, I love feeling um, am ambidextrous, which I am now, I love feeling um, aplomb, I love feeling abundant, I love feeling um, appreciation, right? If you start to do that and you stay on the A's as long as you can, and then you go to the where you can't get any A's, you go to the B's. You know, I love feeling beautiful. I love feeling uh, balmy. I love feeling bright. I love feeling brilliant. I love feeling uh, benevolent. I love feeling bam. <laughs> so it doesn't have to be logical it doesn't have to be something from your head it's a fun game to play and if you play i've played it with people who are from other countries we had four people at a lunch everybody was from another country every other country spoke a different language but we all spoke english too so everybody was saying i love feeling sometimes in their language and sometimes in english and we were we were we couldn't stop laughing it was so much fun and i go through as much of the alphabet as i can and i stay on each letter as long as i can um because it's really it's a really fun game i do it if i'm driving a long time if i don't want to listen to the radio and i don't want to i learn french if i don't want to learn french i'll just um 
start playing a game like any of those. I appreciate the sky. I appreciate the cars next to me. Thing that I do when I'm driving also is I think everybody's my tribe. All these people want to get there safely. All these people want me to get there safely. I want everyone else to get there safely. Everybody's working in harmony. Look at how that guy let that guy in. Look at how that guy let me in. Look at how I let that guy in. You know, like, and I feel this connection. And so when I drive, it's really easy. I'm in that flow state. So those are a bunch of things. If anybody can even remember the four things, I'll tell you, I'll tell you just to break it down. One is you, when you drive, it's your tribe. When you're walking, it's your tribe. Um, when you're in a grocery store, it's your tribe. It's your family. It's your whatever, wherever you are, it's your tribe. Um, the ABC game where I go as many things, but I also use the phrase, I love feeling. So it makes it an easy game to play without it draws the feeling to you without you having to be in that feeling to begin with. Um, the game of what are the questions we have? And then the thing about I am and looking to see all the aspects of your spirit that you can perceive about yourself. And what will happen as you do it, you get momentum with these games momentum where it starts to come really fast you don't you start by listening to your heart and then all of a sudden you're a channel and now you're saying you know i'm love i'm i'm powerful i'm eternal i'm infinite i'm god i'm one with everyone i love everyone i'm free i'm happy and you start to it starts to flow but if you do it from your head it won't flow in the same way if you do it from your heart then you get the flow state after you've done it a little bit Thank you for sharing your tips. You showed us your books. Do people get them on your website or on Amazon? Depends on what they want. If you want a physical book, you got to go to Amazon. Um, only one book so far. I've narrated this, just this book. This book is on Amazon and Audible. All three books are on Amazon, but people can go to, if they just want the PDF, they can go to Chronic Pleasure. So that's the name of the, that's my theme chronic pleasure book singular.com and then they can download things for free but if they want the physical book or they want the audible book they go to amazon for those is, or that, your, is that your main website or is that just a website for your books that's just a website for the books um my main website is karen laurie coaching.com i believe I'm not totally sure. <laughs> I, I never go on it. Uh, but I think that's my main website, KarenLaurieCoaching.com. Um, so I think that is my main website. I might I might uh, message you later and tell you it's something else. I noticed that you also have a YouTube channel. What kind of content are you posting there? I have uh, two different podcasts that are there. The first one's called Chronic Pleasure, and it's a podcast where I basically just share information about I share you know how I do things so a lot of the stuff that I've talked about today there's more on that chronic pleasure podcast I have another podcast that's called stories we love stories we love is about people doing good in the world so I just interviewed uh, Dean Radin he studies at the Institute of Noetic Science Science and he studies psychic phenomena I am um, before that I've interviewed people that do green energy people that are doing kelp restoration for biofuel or people that help children uh, be more free or more joyful or do people who do organic regenerative uh, farming. So I just have been, I found, I found, I've interviewed Bruce Lipton. I found that for me in that one, I just keep interviewing people that are either about kids, the environment or health. Those are my areas that seem to be where they're the most, um, where I get the most, uh, People I've picked even my first guy that I interviewed was a guy who picks up litter on his paddleboard in the Potomac and he's picked up over three school buses of litter from when I when I when I when he started to when I interviewed him at first and that was like a year ago. So that and then I also do I work out a lot so I put some of those videos on and then I have helpful videos I have some of my acting videos on there. I just have a whole bunch of um, stuff on YouTube just because. Sometimes the files are too big to put in other ways. So I put it on YouTube and then I can send a link. Are you still acting? Um, I, I would act um, when, I, when I get jobs. I do act when I get jobs. I did one job last year. I haven't acted as much because I've been coaching more and I wasn't as much into it. But in the last 
couple of months, I've had more desires. I've had more things that are potentially happening. Um, so I'm just letting it unfold. I love coaching my clients. I love watching my clients transform. I love seeing, I love seeing how everyone came in feeling like they don't belong and everyone loves the community. It's just beautiful. So I love that. And I love acting, acting so fun. So, and I love, I'm writing a fourth book called, well, I don't know what it's called yet, but it's about being youthful, having more energy, being more, being youthful, looking and feeling youthful. Cause I used to have more wrinkles they are all gone, not through any, no injections or nothing like that. No mm-hmm. facelift, nothing. Um, <laughs> so I'm writing that fourth book on how to look and feel younger. Um, but yeah, I love acting. You have anything else that you're working on that you want us to know about? You know, I'm doing, because of that uh, Stories We Love podcast, I'm now doing um, environmental work. So now I'm working with um, one of the people that does um, the kelp biofuel and getting all the going, I'm working with the government. I'm not even a, I'm not even like a person who talks to the government, but I'm, I've been talking to the government and connecting people up. I'm also working with somebody who does, um, solar panels on uh like state state lands like fairs and prisons and things like that and so and then they have batteries and then it would go to the local community and to the place to the farm or or to the fairgrounds or to the prison or wherever they put it um so i'm working with both of those and then um this is goofy but one of my my old friends an ex-boyfriend actually is running for president so i'll probably be working on that um, he is a big, huge environmental advocate. Um, he's been an environmental lawyer for 40 years, and he also does other things. Um, and he just has a really beautiful mind. So I'll probably be helping with that. And that's those things. And then I'm taking acrobatic classes. <laughs> I'm a busy woman. I love life. I love life. After watching this podcast, people may want to reach out to you and ask you questions. Are you open to that? Yeah. And if people download my books or get my books on Amazon at the chronic pleasure book.com or Amazon, um, and you look up Karen Laurie, um, L O R R E, you can see my books there. Um, in the back of my books, don't tell anybody, but in the back of my books is my email. Um, because I want people to be able to reach out to me. So that's, that would be the easiest way that you can do it. Um, is you just, you can, and the books that you would, if you download them, they're free. Um, and you'd get my email because the book actually comes from, no, the book comes from the website. So you wouldn't get my email, but if you look in the back of the book, it'll, it'll show you my email and that would be fine. Great. Well, before we finish up, can you leave us with one last positive message? Yeah. Every single person, if you're watching this, if you're thinking about someone else, every single animal, we're all God incarnate. We're all together. We're all one and we're all individualized and we can all have what we want. It really requires only being in connection with your spirit, being clear and making a good decision. Oh, I want this and I'm going to have it. Like I had about getting to the, get, being alive, getting back to my, you know, being, being alive for my mom, that kind of, power and making those choices and then following the path the path seems sometimes like it's not going anywhere or it's meandering but when you reach when you get to the place where you got something you wanted and you look back you'll see that if you hadn't been stalled here for a little bit then you wouldn't have been there at that perfect timing. And you wouldn't have been from that position, you wouldn't have met this person, right? So if you can know that that's always happening, you're always on the perfect path. You're always being guided to what you want, not what your spirit wants for you, what you want. Karen, thank you for that message. And thank you for being my guest. Appreciate you so much, Jeff. This was so fun. And um, I appreciate everybody who's listening. And thank you so much. I really feel honored to be part of this and um my heart is expanding thank you so much thanks for watching the jeff mara podcast 
I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.